You've probably seen or played this game. Nothing really impressive about it. But what if I told you that this game was built almost entirely by artificial intelligence? What that means is I did not write a single line of code. Instead, I was instructing the tool using simple English and it was writing the code for me. Cool, right? On top of that, I also used a speech-to-text extension to make it mostly hands-free. I've left some links in the description so you can also try it out. Let's build this game together. Alright, so we have our empty Codex JavaScript sandbox here. And let's try to understand what, what even is in this page. So you can see that this rectangle right here, this box right here, is where the JavaScript code will actually run. Underneath that, we have the area to provide the instructions in English. And this area actually, once I press submit for these instructions, this English gets converted to JavaScript on this side right over here. So let's see this in action. So if I say write, uh, this is a test. Oops. And then I'll write, I'll press submit. And you can see that it converted my English instruction into JavaScript. And you can see that the JavaScript result shows up right over here. Now let's try to make this uh, possible using our speech to text uh, extension. So let me show you that in action. Write, this is a test. Okay, so it got down, it got the wrong type of write. No worries, I'll fix that. I'll press submit. And it did the same thing again. So perfect, it works just fine. So I'll go ahead and delete this and we can get started with our game. Now, before I get started with the game, you can see that there's a pencil symbol right over here. This pencil symbol is actually to edit the JavaScript or HTML in this case to match our personal preferences and criteria that we would like. And we're going to be using this feature. So I'm going to right now, I'm going to go ahead and delete that for now. And let's get started with our game. Make a black circle. All right. And I'll press submit. And you can see once again, a uh, simple English instruction I provided was converted into several lines of JavaScript. So what would have taken me, you know, a minute or two to actually write down, it got done in seconds. And without the need for me to even type anything, which is just amazing. Now, I think the circle is a little too big, so let's make it smaller. Make it smaller. I'll go ahead and submit that. And once again, just amazing how it can convert an English sentence into JavaScript. Um, now it's gonna, we're going to position the circle anywhere. So I'm going to go ahead and say, position the circle absolutely anywhere. All right, submit. And the circle changed positions. Perfect. I want the circle to move around like we saw in the beginning and actually bounce off the walls. So let's make it move. Animate the circle to move both horizontally and vertically forever. All right, so I got what I wanted to say, and I'll press submit. And again, something, it just blows my mind every time how one English sentence or instruction was able to produce this code right here, which is actually getting the circle to move horizontally and vertically. And you can see that it even bounces off of the walls. So it's very slow right now, but boom, you see that it bounces off the walls. Perfect. So let's speed it up a little bit, um, because I don't know about you guys, but this is too slow, and I think anybody could beat this game, even my cat. So let's speed it up. So I'll say the x speed is 5, y speed will be 5, the x speed will be negative 5 here, and 5 here. And next I'll say that the y speed is negative 5. 5 sounds good. And the ball, or circle, is moving much faster. Perfect. Now I want a rectangle at the bottom, which is actually going to be used to deflect the, the ball. So the next set of instructions will be create a rectangle at the bottom of the page, horizontally centered. All right, looks good. And I'll submit this. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'll go ahead and submit this. And it created a square, which again, no worries, we can always go here and edit it. So it created a square at the bottom of the page, horizontally centered. Now I'll just change this right here and I'll change its width to 30 pixels. That sounds nice. 
and um, everything else looks fine to me. I think red is fine, and you can see that it's there. Now, I, unfortunately, I can't move this rectangle as of right now, but I actually want it and need it to move, so let's get that out of the way. When I press the left arrow key, move the rectangle to the left. That's my next pair of instructions, and I'll make this look a little better for me to, you know, give me peace of mind. So when I press the left arrow key, move the rectangle to the left, and then I'll submit this. And now, if I press the left arrow key, you guys are seeing that it moves to the left. I can even hold it, and it moves to the left. Something very intelligent that Codex, the AI model that Codex has provided to me was I can even move right and I can even hold and go to the right. Now that's just very impressive how, how I only mentioned left but it was able to infer that I wanted to move right. And so I can, I think this is a little too slow. We won't be able to win at this speed. So I'll go in and change it to 30. That sounds about right. And now if I try it out, much better. It's much, much better. I can actually catch up the, catch up to the circle that's bouncing around and actually hit it. But you can see that when I catch up to the circle, it just goes through the rectangle. And we don't want that to actually happen. We actually want it to bounce off, right? So that's the next instruction. If the rectangle and the circle overlap, make the circle go in the opposite direction. All right, not is the circle. <laughs> I said if the circle and if the rectangle and the circle, if the rectangle and the circle overlap, make the circle go in the opposite direction. Perfect. I'll go ahead and submit. And now I'm going to go in here and change this to X speed. Now watch this. I'll let it hit the ground first and the walls on the sides and the top and it bounces. Let's see if it bounces off the rectangle. Perfect. You can see that it doesn't go through it. It actually bounces off just like that. And that's what we wanted. Now, obviously, this game wouldn't be complete if we could keep track of a score, right? So the next thing is we're going to keep track of score. So the next instruction. Now track a score. Display the current score in the top left with the label score. Okay. I said now track a score. Now track a score and I'll display display the current score in the top left with the label and it's going to be labeled as score. Perfect. So let's see how this shows up. I'll press submit and wow, look at that. It pulled up score and it has even knows that the score is zero as of right now. Now I don't know about you guys but it looks a little small so let's make the uh, label bigger. Make the score label larger. Perfect and I'll go ahead and enter and boom just like that it made it much larger and easier to see which is what I wanted. Now we actually want to keep track of the score, so let's make it so that the score increases by one every second. Increment the score by one every second. Perfect. Increment the score by one every second. And I'll submit. And you can see that the score is starting to increase by one every second. It's five, six, seven, eight, and you get the point. Now, we actually also want the score to be penalized if it touches the ground, right? So like if I, I'm unable to reach the circle in time and it touches the ground, I should receive some sort of penalty. So that's what we're going to do next. If the circle touches the bottom of the page, decrease the score by 10 and show a label underneath the score label that says points lost. Hide the, ten, hide the label one second after it appears. All right, so a little bit of some problems here. So if the circle touches the bottom of the page, all right, decrease the score by 10. I think 10 is a little too harsh, so let's do five. And show a label underneath the score label that says, and I'll, I'll make it so that this, so score label is actually a variable right here. Score label is a variable that it defined. So show a label underneath the score label that says, um, lost five points. And I'll actually exclamation point there that says lost five points. 
and I'll say and also I'll say hide hide the label one second after it appears perfect so let's see how this shows up now so if it touches the ground let's see what it'll do all right so you see that it said lost five points and it also just uh, reduced five points off my score but it kind of overlaps it so let's change that over here so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say it should be 50 pixels down from the top Next, I also want it to be appear as, you know, a bigger font sized and I want it to be red. So I'm going to say lost label because that's what it's called. Lost label, lost label dot style dot font size equals 30 pixels. And then I also want it to be red. So lost label, I want it to be a red background over the uh, behind the black text. So lost label dot style dot background color equals red, just like so. And now I'll let's see how this works. So I'll first I'll I'll hit it. Good. It bounces off the red rectangle. And this time I'll let it touch the ground. And you can see that it said lost five points, and I actually did lose five points, so it should go from seven to two. Perfect. And so just like that, you can see that our game is complete, and I can even test it out a little bit, so let's try to capture it. Just like that, perfect. It bounced off. My score is increasing. Nice. Going good. Um, oh, I might miss this one. I missed it and I lost five points. So you can see that the game is working perfectly and it was all created by simple English instructions, about 10 simple English instructions that Codex was able to convert into JavaScript. And you can see that there were a few hiccups that I encountered, but overall it's very impressive how powerful this concept is. And it seems like likely in the near future, AI can handle much larger projects to code. You can also try out the OpenAI Codex Sandbox by joining their API waitlist. I've provided links in the description which you can use. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.